Welcome to 2020 Punch TV. We have a great show in store for you. Uh, everybody has collected their favorite things from the past year. So we're going to talk about our favorite movies and TV, the stuff that we were watching. We're going to talk about our favorite books, whether they're comics or fiction or nonfiction. And we're also going to talk about a few albums that we really love. So hopefully you will stay tuned and get inspired and have some great picks and things to look forward to this year. So there was a lot to watch in 2019. That was great. Uh, TV, movies. Uh, does anybody have a standout favorite? Craig, what was the best thing that you saw? Uh, I think probably Parasite from Bong Joon-ho uh, in terms of films. Uh, there was obviously Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, things like Midsommar. Uh, but I, would, I think Parasite for me ended the year as like the best movie of 2019. And for TV, I would say probably The Watchmen. Uh, movies, I totally concur with your list. I like them both. There wasn't a lot of in movies that I love, love, loved. I thought TV was better. I loved Fleabag season two. Yep, I loved one. Penis. It was amazing. Um, but I really like Chernobyl. Yes. I that... mean, the miniseries is back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would say that was my number two for yeah, TV. Yeah. It was really good. Hank, what'd you like? For movies, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is what I selected for the number one because you know me and I love French romantic films <laughs> right right this time about you forbidden do. love it was forbidden love in the 18th century okay? that's the best kind right the best kind and fleabag the best show on television so best good. show on television series two about love about family and faith and hot priests yeah these, these are none of these shows of anybody's talking about i've seen <laughs> he's like, what are we, <laughs> like what are we talking I'm, about? I'm probably like 90 percent of the people watching. just right say now, star wars and we'll move on star wars <laughs> mandalorian <laughs> Uh, I, you know what? I was really happy with the last Star Wars movie. I was glad. I'm glad it's over. It wasn't disappointing, which was all I wanted. So that made it good. But I, I'm actually glad the whole thing's over because it was so. It was just overwhelming how weird it was. Uh, it was three weird movies. Uh, but I'd say The Watchmen was like an amazing TV show. Uh, and well, The Mandalorian was what I was saying, but The Watchmen like really surprised me. I wasn't really uh, looking forward to seeing it because I'm a huge Watchmen comic fan, but I really enjoyed that TV show. I'm starting to feel like almost a FOMO on things because like you can only invest so much of your time into entertainment, right? So there's all these great TV shows that I that are on my list that are urgent, like Watchmen, The Boys, uh, Mandalorian. There's like a huge list of things I don't want to watch, but like, you know, I come home from work and I only have a couple hours before I'm unconscious. So it's tough to fit it all in. It is. There's a lot of... TV it's tough to keep movies. track of it now like obviously yeah. I professionally keep track of what's going on and uh, Hank and I'll get together to do a bit for our punch radio show and he'll be like oh have you been watching this and I'll be like I don't even know what that is yeah, I have to thank Hank for penis or pen 15 or whatever you want to call it because I <laughs> hadn't on. heard about it. It, it, it completely was like not on my radar. I had just wrapped up Fleabag and I wanted that kind of show again and that just came along at the right time. It is delightful. What I liked about both Fleabag and Penis is that they are unapologetic. They are totally frank. They are just fun and witty and smart and the, yeah, they're a little bit awkward. It has that kind of awkward humor to it, but it, it you feel like you're friends with those people. No, for people that don't know, uh, Fleabag has won so many awards. TV uh, is like gone to win everything, but for the Pen Fifteen or the Penis Show, yeah. um, quickly, w what is it about? Like, uh, why should people watch high. this? Junior um, high, and it's written by two women. They're both in their thirties, and they play the two main characters who are best friends, Anna and Maya you forget instantly that they are adults. All the other parts are played by children um, and they are 12 years old. You're watching them and they're 12 and they're going through all the angsty garbage that you remember. Thankfully, it's so buried deep, but it's you know bringing stuff to the surface oh, as an adult. It's like, back. yeah, you, you remember how mean everybody was right. and how mean. stupid everybody mm -hmm. was. And the other thing that I really like about it is the production value is really authentic. It's definitely a school, but you kind of can't quite place what the time is so it could be 10 years 20 years 30 years ago it doesn't matter like kids are kids they behave the same way 
but it is a fascinating watch. You talk, you spoke earlier about how you kind of miss the characters. I thought the Deuce was definitely one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. and, you, and you miss those characters. Like, they're no, lo, no longer in my life. And I, I'm sad. I was very sad when that show ended. I loved Deuce, it, too. This was an amazing, amazing TV show. Yeah, yeah it's like you miss yeah. your friends. You do. Yeah, at the end, you do, and it was very Wait, You miss everybody from the Deuce. I, I do, yes. Even, <laughs> even wow, the, out of uh, all the shows, that's the Even one, okay. the pimps. I miss the pimps, yeah. yes. <laughs> you, you miss them the most. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, before we wrap, is there anything that hasn't come out yet that you're looking forward to for this year? Uh, well, uh, I would say Dune. Right? What? Danny Villeneuve's yeah. uh, adaptation of Dune. Me too. Oh. Come on. Um, there's a you, lot coming out. Tony's going to yeah. say the same thing as me. Picard, right? Tony and I, we're no, going to get together. We're going to watch Picard. That's Kathy's thing. I don't really like Star Trek. So that's like, I'm not really looking forward to we're it We're going to beat all. you up behind the dumpster. I'd rather this. see an X-Men movie than Picard. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Those are fighting words. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there before this gets too dirty and nasty. Uh, obviously, there's a, lots of great TV to watch. We'd love to hear what you like. So comment on our Facebook page if there's something that we haven't mentioned that you particularly loved. And hopefully we have some uh, good picks for you for things that you haven't checked out yet. So uh, here's to 2020 and great TV and movies. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Pew, 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 pew. Back in 1977, Star Wars came out with their new toys from Kenner. It was a huge hit, a huge sensation. And since then, other than the dark times between 83 and 95, there's been toys and lots of toys. So many toys that I can't possibly have them all. But new toys are coming out all the time, which are fun. So this year, the new movie brought in the um, new toys for the new movie. And uh, this was my favorite toy of 2019. He is actually the, uh, the Sith Trooper. He's not a great toy, but he's my favorite because he was the one that got me excited about the movie. And I think that's kind of why I love toys so much, the excitement um, of the movie. He was red. He was a stormtrooper. He was called a Sith Trooper. We didn't know what that meant. It was awesome. Uh, this year also, they brought out the, the new vintage figures, the three and three quarter inch that look a lot like the old toys, but they have a lot more movable stuff. And they have the cards that are reminiscent of the stuff that we were able to get from the 70s, which is really exciting. These things have been coming and going for a long time. Sometimes they come, sometimes they go. But the reality is toys for me are exciting because they bring me back to my childhood and life is hard. And when I get to come home at the end of the day and look at my toys, it makes me very, very happy. And that's why I love toys. Hey, my name's Bosk. Hey, I'm the Knight of Ren guy. Books, comics, things that we read, they are the bread and butter of my life. I, I love things. And it's like, you know, you want to watch really cool TV, but then it's like, there's all this other cool stuff to read. I only have so much time. So here's my picks for 2019. Clyde fans came out this year. Um, this has been in the works for over 20 years. It's uh, made by Seth. He is one of my all-time favorite cartoonists, and it is awesome. It is the story of two brothers who um, had a family business and then, like, kind of their life. It's a little melancholy, but it's beautiful. It's an exploration of time and love to a certain extent as well. Really great. And then ooh, another heavy book, um, Rusty Brown by Chris Ware. This book is um, very sad very depressing, like most of his other stuff, but beautiful. And the design of it is incredibly great. Um, I highly recommend, again, this is another one that's like many, many years in the making because it's like it pulls from some of his other sources, but then there's new content in there too to finish off the whole story. So Rusty Brown, awesome. Did anybody else read this? No. I'm going no. to now. Okay, you totally should. It's really, really good. I love depressing comics. Let's get down on I that. I know, right? Um, <laughs> not depressing, <laughs> melancholy. We'll let me, go with that. Let me go with some sad stuff for my sad yeah. life already. Wow. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I also really like Little Bird, which we had Darcy on the show that last year to talk about, which is really a beautiful comic. Um, and for fiction, The Testaments uh, by Margaret Atwood, the sequel oh, yeah. to Handmaid's Tale, really good. 
I wasn't disappointed. I thought, oh, is this going to... But really good storytelling. What did you read? I read? I do. I read a zillion comics, so there's too many to to like Criminal's Awesome, uh, The Second Coming is Awesome. There's so many. Uh, But for books, uh, The Topeka School by Ben Lerner. Um, A family uh, set around the year 2000. Um, There's some infidelity in there. There's some kind of past uh, abuse in there. But then it's really about raising um, a white boy who's now in high school and trying to turn him into the right kind of person um, is what it's about. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty good book. I, I only read about nine and a half books this year. So okay. I'm halfway through another one. Most of them are biographies or autobiographies, but this one, yeah, I read a lot. I've read a few books. That's like yeah. one a month. Right? So that's, that's not bad. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Nice. Uh, Craig, what'd you read? Uh, so for comic books, uh, Bad Weekend by Ed Brubaker, which nice. you actually lent me. Uh, I thought that one was really fun about a, basically a, a crusty, comic book guy and his assistant and 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 a, a bad weekend really uh for fiction i read a lot of science fiction in terms of fiction so there was a book called semiosis this year by a writer named uh, sue burke and it's about a uh, group of people that leave earth because they don't like you know the war and, and just how humans are and they go to this other planet but it's not really what they expected it to be when they get there and then the book takes place over like generations uh, and they sort of make friends with the, the plant life, which is something, mm-hmm. it's like, a, it's a bigger organism. Like uh, the, the plants themselves are like a species and uh, and cool. very powerful on the planet. So anyway, really cool book. Uh, and then I also, also read a lot of film and music biography or essays and stuff like that. And there was a great little book called the... Uh, uh, 1999, the best year in movies, and it just looks at the phenomenon of 1999 and all the great movies mm-hmm. that came out that year, from you know American Beauty to Fight Club to Office Space to just all. There was just a ton of great movies that came out that year, and it just looks at each movie and sort of why the climate was right for those movies. Cool. Yeah, um, I'm a big Love and Rockets fan. Uh, Love and Rockets is still happening. Gilbert Hernandez is like somewhat of a god to me. Uh, so uh, all the new Love and Rockets, but really I go back to the old stuff. I can read old Love and Rockets over and over again. Brie M, Grow Crazy. Um, so I've been kind of doing that. I got into the Immort- Immortal Hulk, which kind of surprised me uh, because I've seen the. I've been reading Hulk since I was a kid, and this one's quite good. It's kind of almost like a Swamp Thing, uh, uh, newly interpreted uh, kind of a horror type Hulk thing, which I really like. Uh, and then I like things that probably you guys don't like. I like Mary Jane. And I like Catwoman, and I kind of like, you know, the modern uh, superhero stuff, too. So working at a comic store, um, I still stick to my favorites, you know, uh, Spider-Man. But older stuff, I love going back in time and reading stuff from my childhood. Because I can reread that stuff, and it just brings back a lot of memories. So, yeah, I love I love my old books. Okay. I love my old books. The, bu- the old books are great. It's fun to go back totally. into the library and yeah. reread stuff. Um, and I've rediscovered uh, the public library this year. I've been taking out a ton of stuff, and it's free, and you can request stuff online, and then it all comes at once, and you're like, wow, it's like a buffet of books. So, yeah, support your local library branch and uh, check them out online because it is like an, an awesome resource that you can tap into. Yeah. It's a good plug for the library. Super mm-hmm. good plug for the library. <laughs> I love the library. Cash that check. <laughs> so, Ching. So That's say, right. Don't we sell that big library yeah, money. I'm getting that, that big payola yeah. from the public library. Yeah. It's no. two cards in one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for books and uh, comics for, for us for 2019. And hopefully we'll have lots of good recommends for you for this next year, too. Okay, rather than uh, tell you about all the stuff that I saw in 2019 that I liked, I'll do a quick plug for thefeedbacksociety.com where we have people like Hank and myself and some other movie critics talking about the best movies of 2019. As well, uh, one of our affiliate Punch members, uh, Dave Scadden, does the best 20 albums of uh, 2019, so go check those out. But rather than me talking about what I saw last year that I really liked, I really wanted to talk about something I am very excited excited for this year and that's the Denny Villeneuve adaptation of Dune. It's based on the Frank Herbert sci-fi novel, one of my favorite books of all time. I've read it so many times. It's so great. 
Uh, and of course, you know, I love the David Lynch version. That is not an endorsement, though. I do not recommend it to people unless you're really in deep with this thing. Uh, there's a great sci-fi uh, channel version of it uh, that tells the story better, but it's just a little cheaper looking. Uh, and so you take Denny Villeneuve, which is just one of my favorite directors of the last few years, uh, making movies like Arrival and uh, like Blade Runner 2049 just blew my mind. Uh, and then taking the, the Dune story and taking Denny Villeneuve and uh, again smushing those things together, uh, I just, it, I, it's going to be amazing and I'm looking so forward to it. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm too overhyped and I'm going to end up hating it. I hope not. But uh, Dune by Denny Villeneuve, I'm really looking forward to it. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com. Hey everybody, welcome. This is Tim. Tim is a friend of mine and Tim collects, uh, he collects a lot of stuff, but right now we're going to look at his Lego collection. Tim, how long have you been collecting Lego? Uh, seriously like this? Since 99. Since... Uh... Star Wars. Since Star Wars. When the Star yeah. Wars stuff came out, you were like jumping on that yes, and you I were was. excited. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. super excited. Yeah. Like I, I, played, I played with Lego when I was a kid, but then they started, you know, doing the, the licensing stuff and I couldn't pass this stuff up. I'm pretty sure that Star Wars was the first license that they actually went with, wasn't it? Yes, it was. As yeah. far as I know, it was, yes. So, okay, here we are. We're in your room. I'm looking at all the fabulous things. How many sets do you have? I have no idea. I've never actually counted. I'm, I'm afraid to count. I count that there's 18. There's 18 <laughs> sets that I can see in my peripheral vision. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, the, I've, I've, I'm overwhelmed with the amount of stuff. Most of it being over here Star Wars, but I see you have a lot of other stuff that's not Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, I, it just kind of snowballed. I just, I got a kick out of it. And yeah, but it was the Star Wars stuff that really got me into this. I like the fact that you have the giant sets that no one else is going to have. <laughs> Uh, Ultimate Collector Series, I see that you have the, uh, going all the way here to the, the Tantive mm -hmm. Uh the giant Star Destroyer down here. How many pieces is in the Star Destroyer? That one, I think, was 3,600. 3,600 pieces. How long does that take you to build? Uh, honestly, it took me about two weeks. Well, two weeks off and on, obviously. Off and on, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, if I sat down and built it, I'm sure it would only take me a few hours, but... You have a, a place where you build Lego, a designed place where you're actually mm -hmm. sitting down and building Lego. So this is like your area. Right here. Right here. That's, that's impressive. It's I pretty there, impressive. I, I pull the chair out. I sit there. I build the Lego. I watch TV. Okay. We need one of these at our house. I need, I'm serious because we like sit at the kitchen table and then you have to move things out of the way. It that's, sucks. That's what I started with. Yeah. And I built the table for it then instead. So it's, it's great. Okay. Uh, look around at your Lego. Which is your favorite piece? Oh, that's tough. Do you like the obviously the you know, Star Wars? I love the Star Wars stuff, and I think the Ultimate Collector Slave One. The Slave One is awesome. Yes, because yes. it's it's actually built to scale to the minifig. And I noticed with all the Lego stuff that they are coming up with Ultimate Collector, they're kind of redoing the Ultimate yes. Collector. Are you buying the the new sets as well as the older sets? Some of the I, I'll pick up some of the newer sets, uh, just because of the big change, like the original Land Speeder was kind of it was very cool 21 years ago but they learned some things and they made them just much nicer so they changed a lot of the pieces like it was like oh, yeah. that yeah they did a really good job so lego land you gonna go if i get the opportunity absolutely yeah have you ever built your own lego from scratch no not your thing yeah no no me neither <laughs> by the stats all right here we go thank you very much for letting me see your lego today bring us into your home it's uh it's it's amazing um, I just want to stop and say, um, if I touch this, will it fall apart? Yes, it will. <laughs> so, so please don't. Wait, can we watch it on camera, watch it fall apart? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting us into your home today, Tim. <laughs> awesome cool. collection. We'll come back one day and look at your toy collection next. Yes. Awesome. By all means. Thank you. No problem. What's that, Tony? You don't want me to talk about Picard for two minutes? Instead, the best television shows of 2019? Yeah, I got a whist, but, oh my god, a minute and 53 seconds. Okay, we're going to get through this. The best television shows 
of 2019. Number one, we talked about it already, Fleabag. The only thing that Hank and Kelso, at Hank and Kelso, has dished out 100% to Fleabag Series 2 uh, on Amazon Prime, uh, then Penis or Pen15. Uh, it's a Hulu show, but in Canada, you can check it out on the CBC Gem. Then the other two uh, comes on Comedy Central, Dublin Murders, it's a BBC show that stars brought to North America that Crave brought to Canada. Uh, so Dublin Murders, check that out. Chernobyl, uh, I know it's not technically a TV series, it's a mini series, but it's got to go on there because it's one of the best. One of the best. Uh, Euphoria on HBO, uh, Watchmen uh, that we mentioned, everybody loves Watchmen and what they did with that and taken from the things, uh, the, the book and the graphic novel and then changing it up. You didn't know what to expect. OMG, check that out. Uh, Big Mouth on Netflix, uh, the final season of Veep. Uh, came out on HBO. If you haven't watched the series, shame on you. Shame. The Crown on Netflix. Uh, brand new actors playing the same characters. I thought it'd be weird. It's actually really cool. Um, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson on Netflix. Uh, hilarious. Dairy Girls, a BBC show uh, that Netflix has brought over to Canada. Uh, Shrill on Hulu, also on Crave. Uh, Billions on Showtime, uh, the season that aired this year, or I guess last year, 2019 one of the best seasons uh, so that's still going so check that out uh, marvelous mrs mazel uh, another amazon prime show one show from youtube the youtube makes originals weird city check that out it was good on becoming a god in central florida uh showtime canada on crave dos boot i've mentioned numerous times so you can check it out on cbc gym uh, C, one of the apple uh tv plus the apple plus shows uh, C with the uh, aquaman you should see aquaman Ooh. No, don't see Aquaman. That show sucked. Horrible movie. But CC, The Spy on Netflix, Sasha Baron Cohen in a real role? Oh my goodness. And The Mandalorian, because uh, Tony and Kathy say it's the best thing ever, and now I've watched numerous episodes. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, For All Mankind uh, on Apple TV+, Plus, Sex Education on Netflix, Mindhunter on Netflix, Finish It Off with Brooklyn Nine-Nine, one of the only major network shows that I actually watched that is good. Dean says that I need to see Letterkenny. I need to say Letterkenny because I love Letterkenny and The Good Place. Those are the other two that are not on the list that have to be. OMG, out of time. Sorry, bye. So we're going to spend a little time now on music. Uh, what were your picks from 2019? Tony, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, you know, I was surprised. Uh, Iggy Pop put a new album out. Uh, after post-pop uh, depression, I thought that was kind of the end. He did a couple spoken word things in, in France uh, over the last couple of years, but he actually put an album out called Free. Um, Iggy Pop is, is older as, as well as I am older, so it's definitely not the crazy jump around Iggy Pop that you know. Uh, but it's socially relevant to the time, and uh, I just love Iggy Pop. I think just has a wonderful voice, so that was that was my big one for this year is Iggy Pop Free. Okay. Hank? A wonderful voice and a wonderful body. So he's yeah, got a shirt off and he makes me feel bad about yeah. myself. Uh, like, like, like 90 he, years old, he's just ripped. He's 98. Carved oh. out of wood, that guy. <laughs> he's 98. Oh. Yeah. Um, 2019, uh, I mentioned this to a couple of you, but The Who, not WHO. H U. Yeah. Mongolian like rock Husker using no? traditional instruments and throat singing. Yeah. We have talked about this. Okay, yes. I actually did check it out. Uh-huh. I listened to their album and I watched a bunch of their videos on YouTube. Their instruments are beautifully crafted and amazing. They're, they're these really crazy mm-hmm. things like guitar, sitar, slash. I don't know what it is, but it makes great sound. Yeah, very, uh, very original, very nice. unique. Cool. Yeah. Check that one out. And they're heavy. Like, they're, they, oh, yeah. they're kind of metal. You know what? I can without guarantee being metal. it's the best music out of Mongolia you will ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> you will ever hear. That's my personal guarantee for you. I, yeah. I believe it. Mm-hmm. I trust okay. you. Well, you listen to a lot of music. I do. And honestly, like, I, I honestly dig back more than I pay that. I mean, I know what's coming out and everything, but I, I dig back further into different veins of things than I necessarily care about what's coming out. But... Um, there was a few good albums this year. I would say like uh, the the Lizzo album uh, surprised me because pop is not normally something that I yeah. would go for, but it's a, a brilliant album and she's great. Uh, there is a Malibu Ken Aesop Rock Tobacco album that uh, <laughs> if you know any of those things, you'd go, what would that sound like? And it's like kind of exactly what you think it would sound like if you mush those things together. Uh, but I really enjoyed the Black Mountain album Destroyer. Uh, and I got to like interview uh, Jeremy Schmidt from the band this year for a Star Phoenix article that I wrote. Unfortunately, I had to miss the show because I was at a conference uh, and it was like super anticipated because the album is just 
a huge wall of sound and these guitars and uh, Rachel Fannin from uh, Sleepy Sun was part of it and and the the synth stuff that Jeremy Schmidt does is just amazing. So uh, I, I don't know if you, were you at that show. That show was amazing yeah. and it made me deaf um, because I'm old and I <laughs> usually do bring like ear protection, but I forgot and I was like, well, how loud can it be? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't bring anything and then it was like this is okay. And then we walked out of the venue and people were talking at me and it was like. They're transformers because their voices are all like, <laughs> like underwater and metallic. And like, I went to bed with the ringing and everything. It's like, oh man, I miss that. I, it was yeah, a great show. It was a great show, roll. really That's good show. But uh, yeah, I have kids, bring your ear protection when you go to the rock shows if you're going to stand in front of the speaker because otherwise it's stupid. Yeah, I was yeah. sad to miss it, but uh, it was good. But it's a good album. It's good. What, uh, what um, do we have here? I brought a few albums. Uh, so, uh, Brittany Murphy, or sorry, Brittany, Brittany Murphy. Howard. Dave always says Brittany Murphy. <laughs> Brittany Howard. <laughs> Brittany Howard. I think she's uh, she's she dead. Uh, <laughs> so she channels Brittany Murphy. Uh, Brittany <laughs> Howard uh, from Alabama Shakes did her own thing and she's an amazing talent and the band is an amazing band. Um, but I think her thing was like, you know, when you collaborate with people especially who are super talented it's like they add things and change things and they, it makes it better but then it's not yours right. anymore so she wanted to make something that was like strictly just hers um, and she made this album it's it's all over the map for sounds and uh, really touching lyrics and it's articulate and smart and I really really dug it a lot um, and Lizzo I have to agree with that like Power, powerful ladies this year yeah. in music. Um, and then the other band that I discovered this year is Krungbin. Yeah, that's a good one. So um, I call it Crumbum in the house just to make fun <laughs> of Dave. But um, So this album came out and it's kind of like a dub version of like this album, which came out the year before. So it's kind of not really a 2019 album, but I discovered them in 2019 and I love them. It's like if Santana was a little less rock and a little more psych yeah. uh, then that's what this is they're a three piece they're from Texas um, and I would love to see them so cool. yeah come to Saskatoon Air Krungbin Krungbin is actually the Thai word for airplane yeah. I think which yeah, that's true. doesn't make any sense for why they're a three piece I, like, actually I looked that up earlier this year Yeah. <laughs> so anyways that, that was my big thing for 2019 Nice. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, more music coming in 2020, and we will keep you in the loop of what we have loved and what we think that you should be checking out as well. So I'm super pumped about this. I adore Linda Berry. She's an incredible creator. She's been making comics for decades. The Marlis comics are hilarious. And she put this book out this year of making comics. It, I got turned on to it by my pal, Tanya Gallant, who is an amazing woman. And she's like, you gotta read this. So I checked it out and then I was like, wait a minute. She put out another book called Syllabus a couple of years ago. And so I thought I should read that one first. So I did. And it was awesome. And basically what it was is she teaches classes. Um, they're art classes, but they're more like about creativity rather than um, like technique and tapping into that like excitement that you had when you were a kid of just like drawing with like no fear and getting over the fear because fear is the mind killer. And I got this and I'm inspired and I'm going to spend more time in 2020 doing stuff and creating than watching TV, I'm really hoping. So I went and I got the kind of pens that she said are really great. I got the book she said I should get. I got the pad of, of drawing paper and I'm gonna do some creating this year. So I'm super, super pumped. I highly recommend both this and Syllabus. Syllabus is more like the notes that she took from when she was doing the class and it's really interesting as a study on like the psychology of creation. But this is more like, you feel like you're being mentored. It's like lessons of like what you should do and keeping a daily journal of art and stuff. So it's super cool. So that's what I'm jazzed about from 2019 going into 2020. So that is Making Comics. I highly recommend that you check this out. And that wraps up our episode for the best of for 2019 and what we're most looking forward to in 2020. We hope we have inspired you with some great picks for things to listen to, to read, or to watch. And we want to hear from you. So communicate to us through Twitter or through Facebook and let us know what you're watching, reading, and listening to. Thanks for watching the show and you know what to do. Till next time, keep your dukes up. Unless you're drawing.
hard to draw with this. I thought that was the dumbest movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> you're dumb. No, you're dumb. No, you're dumb. Your movie sucks. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're rolling. Why can't we all just get along? Okay. You're going to go first? I'll go first. I'll, yeah, introduce us. Well, anyway. You're the host. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <my, laughs> do your job. job. You're Moderating. Job. Okay. Moderating. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm.